If you have sciatica, the chances are that you've been told to do piriformis stretches. The problem is they're more likely to be the wrong thing to do, and you could be in for some trouble, and we're gonna tell you why. Hey, it's Glenn here from Mehab, the world's leading physical therapy alternative, where we educate and empower you to take control of your recovery. If you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button. Any links we mentioned in the video can be found in the description below. And as always, the information we provide is for educational and demonstration purposes only. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Sciatica and piriformis syndrome are often mentioned in the same circles. And there's a lot of misinformation about piriformis syndrome and how it relates to sciatica and the best way to treat it. We're going to take a simple and logical look at it and show you why piriformis stretches make no sense. The premise behind piriformis syndrome is that the muscle is short, tight, or inflamed, causing it to compress on the sciatic nerve and cause sciatica. The sciatic nerve starts as separate nerve roots exiting the spine in the low back and the sacrum, that bundle together before exiting and passing underneath the piriformis. In 98% of the cases, this is the path that it takes. However, in very rare occasions, part or all of the sciatic nerve can pass through the piriformis muscle. In theory, this could cause sciatica and be a true piriformis syndrome. But remember, this happens in less than 2% of people, and it's fairly easy to figure out if it's one you have. Partial or complete piercing of the piriformis by the sciatic nerve is a congenital anomaly, meaning it's present at birth. If the sciatic nerve pierced the piriformis, when the muscle contracts or is stretched, it would compress the nerve and produce sciatica. Because this is a congenital condition, it's likely to be present your whole life and would not just appear one day. So if you've not had sciatica for your majority of your life, you'll be fairly certain that you are not part of that 2%. To be honest, I'm not aware of any research that says that those 2% have a higher incidence of sciatica or not, but anatomically it would make some sense that they would. People who have sciatica are often told to do piriformis stretches and exercises, such as knees to chest, the figure four, the prayer stretch, and it's often the hamstring stretch. The problem is that these stretches generally provide some temporary relief, which unfortunately reinforces the mistaken belief that piriformis syndrome is the cause. Remember, the claim of piriformis syndrome is that the muscle is short, tight, swollen, whatever term you want, and is pressing on the sciatic nerve. But do you know what happens when you stretch a muscle? Let's see. Here we have the sciatic nerve represented by this roll of paper towels, with the piriformis laying over the top. And now we're going to stretch the piriformis. See what happened? Stretching compresses the piriformis down harder on the sciatic nerve. But hold on, sciatica is caused from pressure on the sciatic nerve from the piriformis, but more pressure on it makes it feel better? Do you see the problem now? Yet the internet is full of sites and people and experts recommending piriformis stretches and exercises for sciatica. Let me make one point clear. If you get relief from piriformis stretches, your sciatica is not from a tight piriformis. However, if you do not get any relief, it does not prove piriformis syndrome is the cause of the pain there are far more likely reasons that would need to be ruled out first. So if it's not your piriformis, why do you get relief from piriformis stretches? And what's really causing your sciatica? For that, we have to talk some basic anatomy. Remember those nerve roots exiting the spine that I mentioned earlier? There are holes called foramen where the nerves exit. The foramen are basically two halves of a circle, one from the vertebrae above and one from the vertebrae below with a disc in between. This area is the most common location for nerve root compression and the most common cause of nerve root compression is a bulging or herniated disc, which takes up space in that hole that the nerve needs to pass through. The bulge compresses the nerve, thus causing sciatica. These holes can increase and decrease in size as we bend forward, backward, and rotate. Bending backward will make the hole smaller, and bending forwards will make the hole bigger. By flexing or bending forward, you increase the amount of room for the nerve and take the pressure off the nerve root, and as a result, your symptoms improve. This is why people will get relief from piriformis stretches. It's not the stretching of the muscle that provides relief, but the flexing of your spine that temporarily opens the foramen and removes pressure off the nerve. This is where people get hooked on these exercises and the real problems can begin. It would seem logical that continuing to flex is the key to recovery, but that is incorrect. It can actually delay recovery by potentially increasing the size of the bulge, damaging the disc wall, and causing more inflammation and making symptoms much worse. Several things will happen if your bulge increases. Number one, you're gonna to have to stretch harder or bend forward more to get relief. Number two, 
you can increase the size of that bulge and cause more nerve root compression and thus get more pain. Number three, you can put more pressure on that disc wall and cause more inflammation. This will make your symptoms constant. Number four, you can potentially block movement and make yourself unable to stand up. Have you ever heard of someone say I slipped a disc or I threw out my back? Well, not anatomically correct. The disc bulge is big enough to stop them from getting up or being able to stand up straight. It's important to understand that bending and flexing are not inherently bad, but during the initial stages of recovery, most people benefit from limiting these movements. Part of the restoration of function is increasing flexion tolerance, but only when it is safe and tolerated. So there we go. Hopefully we've cleared up some misconceptions around piriformis syndrome and sciatica and why piriformis stretches and exercises only give temporary relief and are not the likely the correct things to do. Now we're left with the question of what should you be doing? And that we're going to have to cover in our next video. If we provided you some value, please hit that like button and share us with your friends. So you don't miss any release of any of our new videos, don't forget to hit subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.